hi everyone, Matt here. Has this ever happened to you? You buy the cheapest sensor available on the market only to face the problem of it being not very accurate? This has definitely never happened to me. All right, it may have happened to me a couple of times. I know, I know, skipping on sensor is a terrible way to save money. But I have nonetheless find myself in this situation with the all too hypothetical intention of upgrading sensors down the road. Spoiler alert, it never gets done. But just because I want to stay on the cheap side, that doesn't mean I have to sacrifice accuracy. Well, alright, that's exactly what it means, but uh, let's see if I can get away with it. Today we will try to improve the accuracy of this temperature sensor by individually calibrating it. We can use some cool mathematical tricks that I'm going to discuss with you in a bit to improve the accuracy. Actually, all that I'm going to discuss can be applied to every sensor that has a linear calibration curve. That is to say, 99.9% .9 of every sensor we will ever encounter. This sensor in question is the quite famous TMP36GZ. You can find the documentation in, this, in the description. It can read temperatures from minus 40 degrees Celsius to 125 degrees Celsius, and that's a fairly impressive in itself, with a plus minus 2 degrees of accuracy. Plus minus 2 degrees seems very acceptable. Problem is, my specific sensor is nowhere near that accurate. It consistently measures almost plus 4 degrees. And this is, uh, for my application, not so acceptable. It needs to do better. We are going to modify this calibration line that bonds the voltage outputted from the sensor to an actual temperature. You can see here the line B, that is our calibration line. The equation of this line can be found here on table 4. The coefficients of the line are 0.5 volts, and that's the offset, and 10 millivolts per degrees, that is the scaling factor. After our calibration process, we will have two different coefficients, hopefully not that dissimilar from the nominal ones. But how can we do better than the result from the factory? We have to improve it thanks to a few different considerations. Uh, consideration number one is I'm not interested in the whole range the sensor is rated for. In my case, I want to measure the temperature in my apartment. I will therefore expect temperatures from uh, let's say 4 degrees to 30 degrees, 25 degrees. The calibration line given is valid from minus 40 degrees to 125 degrees. If I restrict uh, myself to a smaller range of temperatures, uh, the calibration line will almost surely be different. Uh, but first, uh, a brief consideration. Our sensor is calibrated. A sensor can output uh, a signal proportional to what we are measuring. For instance, uh, in a mercury thermometer, the height of the color of mercury is directly proportional to the temperature of the bulb. In this case, uh, the outputted voltage is directly proportional to the temperature. The relation is almost always linear, because that's the simplest relation to use. So, how is this graph obtained? It is obtained by putting the sensor in an unregulated environment of which we know the temperature and reading the voltage outputted. Do that a bunch of time and you will have a distribution like this. Now, thanks to a linear regression, we can calculate the best line that fits this set of readings. In our case, the relation is this. Not that it needed to be inverted because we want the temperature in function of the voltage when we use the sensor. But the result depended also from the range we consider. The fact that we are using a simple line means that we cannot track local tendencies well. Let's consider this picture. If I consider the extended range, the green one, the correct line is the green one, but if I consider the same data set but on a restricted range, the red one, let's say, the best line is now the red one, which is different. Now, if I use the red one for the extended range, I will have terrible results. 
but if I stay within the limits, I will have actually better results than the green line. A note about the linear regression itself. The theory is actually not that complicated. It is a matter of defining a good error estimator and then minimize the two parameters of a line. You can pause here and take a look at this brief demonstration of the formulas I have implemented in the sketch. The second consideration concerns uh, the installation layout. Uh, the length of the wire, their gauge, composition will affect uh, the reading. So the calibration is best done on the final setup uh, and not on the factory one. Obviously, they cannot foresee the application we are going to make uh, of their sensors, but we can take uh, these factors uh, in consideration for improving its performance. Finally, the line provided is the best statistical approximation of all the sensors that are produced. Small differences can occur from sensor to sensor and from batch to batch. I'm guessing that they work on a 2 sigma standard, so 95% of the sensors are uh, compliant with the specs. I have developed uh, this little program to handle this whole uh, calibration process. Uh, I'm uh, on an ESP8266-12E instead of a conventional Arduino because I will implement this sensor in an uh, Internet of Things project. Uh, but you can use an Arduino Uno modifying uh, only this line. Instead of 3.3 uh, volts, you will be reading up to 5 volts. Apart from this, the script is exactly the same. Once the script is uploaded, I can open the serial monitor and uh, see the menu. Here we can set some parameters. The reference voltage I mentioned a second ago can be modified here also. If you use an Arduino Uno, you will need to set this to 5 volts, otherwise 3.3 volts. Actually, you can do better than that. You can use your multimeter for reading the actual reference voltage of your particular board. Mine, for instance, is 3.27 volts. Using 3.3 volts is almost the same, but this is a free way for taking that error down. Then you can set the reading parameters. The program will make, in this case, 15 readings with a one second delay between them, and then it will average them out to a single value. You can change these parameters as you see fit. Now to the juicier bits. Number one allows us to make a reading, number two allows us to manually input a reading. This is necessary because there is no save function yet. You can write down previous readings done at different temperatures and input them back in the program later. Number three allows us to view the data points that we have gathered so far. And the number 11 is the main attraction. It will calculate the two coefficients of the new calibration line. I need at least two data points, but uh, there is uh, no upper limit. Okay, actually there is an upper limit. It is defined here. It is uh, 10, but you can uh, change this line as well. In my opinion, four or five points uh, are plenty. The circuit itself is very simple, just plug VCC to 3.3 volts, ground to ground, and uh, the output of the sensor to the only analog port of this board. Now it's just a case of plugging the board to a laptop and jump in the serial monitor. I can now take a reading of the current temperature with uh, the first option. I just need to send the integer 1 to the board. Given the current configuration, it will take about 15 seconds. Then the program prompts me to insert the actual temperature that I'm just gonna read from the reference instrument. I've already taken some readings, going as far as putting the breadboard in the fridge. You can see here my data points. I can just go ahead and input them in the program using the function too. With option 3 I can see all of the data I've gathered. Now that I have an adequate number of readings I can proceed with the linear regression. I can just select option 11 and here I have my big result. But uh, how bad or good is it? 
I can jump back on my Google Sheet and take a look of the plot of the original calibration line and the new regression line. We can see how much they differ from one another and evaluate if there are some glaring errors. The difference is actually pretty noticeable, but it is in accordance with the errors I have encountered before. Now, instead of the original coefficients, I can use this too for having more accurate results in a smaller range of temperatures. But how in detail the relationship has changed? Well, let's start from uh, table 4 from the spec sheet. We can see that uh, if uh, we read the voltage in volts, the relationship between temperature and voltage is uh, T equal 100 times uh, voltage reading in volts minus 50. Now our new calibration line is T equal 130 times the voltage reading in volts minus 73. So it is quite different. It would be very imprecise outside of our range of temperature, but if we stay within 0 and 30 degrees Celsius, we should have great results. Being able to calibrate physical phenomena to sensors in a linear manner is a way, way powerful tool. I will work on further versions of this program. I have in mind a couple of features that can be interesting, but you can find the most current version in a Google Drive folder in the link in the description, as well as the Google Sheet file if you don't trust my math. The moral is you can actually get away with chip sensors. Well, quite. Hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time. DFTBA.